The next thing we'll review is looking at a radial tear of the meniscus on the MRI scan. And it's important to be able to differentiate a radial tear because they're a lot different than other tears. In a younger patient, a radial tear can be catastrophic because it completely destabilizes the meniscus. So we'll go through the different images that we look at for assessing for a radial tear and then try to point out uh, why it's different as we look at it on, on the MRI views. So the first way we'll look at radial tears is going through the coronal views. So this will be a radial tear of the anterolateral aspect of the lateral meniscus, which is a common location for these. So this is a right knee, and we'll go through the fat saturation images. And as we'll course down, we'll start to see some increase in signal intensity in the zone of the meniscus here where the tear is located. So this is the iliotibial band and we can start to see evidence of some tearing here of the anterolateral aspect of the lateral meniscus. And that's kind of a subtle finding and that's what we usually see with these is we don't see it as well in the coronal views. We would want to follow the meniscus back and see if there's any extrusion of the meniscus and then follow it all the way posteriorly to verify that the root attachment right here is still intact. So we can see in general the only thing that really is a signal that there's a radial tear is this change on the anterolateral aspect. The next view that I'll go through is a sagittal view. And this is starting at the far lateral aspect. So as we follow this along, we start to see some appearance here of the lateral meniscus. And there's evidence of some disruption here. So the normal appearance would be a dark signal, almost looking like, like a bow tie. And as we come along, you'll see that there's some disruption here and some increased signal intensity. And then we'll start to see more normal appearance. So the anterior horn here has some increased signal within the substance, but it's difficult to tell if that's a tear just looking at that one cut. And as we go more towards the midline, we see that there's evidence of patellar tendonitis right here at the insertion of the patellar tendon on the patella. Here's the ACL. The ACL looks normal. Here's the PCL, normal appearance and then we fall all the way over medially and we can see the medial meniscus looks normal and here's that bow tie appearance here where there really isn't any increased signal intensity within the medial meniscus. So the main cut we look for to look for radial tear is to look at the axial cuts. So I'm starting down distal here, here's the fibular head this is the patellar tendon and as I start to course proximate I want to stop right at the joint line and see this so We'll course up image by image. We're starting to see a little bit of the meniscus here ghosting in. And this is a cut right through the center of the joint. So this is the anterior intermeniscal ligament. This is the anterior horn. And we can see that there's fluid here, which indicates that there is a complete disruption, which is a radial tear of the anterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. And because it's completely disrupted, it disrupts all the hoop fibers, and it makes the whole meniscus unstable, so it doesn't act as a normal shock absorber. As we see more proximally, we can see some swelling within the joint along here. This is a trochlear cartilage with a little bit of a trochlear lesion right here with some swelling in the center of the trochlea within the subchondral bone and then the patella up in here with normal articular cartilage.